Hello my soccer universe, this is my second take of the first video of the year. I hope you had a great start uh, to the new year. I surely had, I think, lots of soccer to watch, but also I watched some ski jumping because here in Austria we are a winter sports nation. I'm still mostly a soccer guy, but you know, I haven't watched any ski racing so far, but the ski jump, that was always my favorite sport. And I like watching that one too. Unfortunately, it fit the decision of that one, fit right in between the break of the first and the second slot. So, good on sports wall to wall. Yes, I watched most of it, not all of it, because you know, family is around and you, you gotta deal with them too, and now they gotta, gotta play. So, the second half of the third slot, uh, splot, slot we were playing a uh, board game while the games were on and the first half of the Arsenal United game I completely missed because little one didn't want to fall asleep. She promised that she will, I volunteered to take her to bed and then she takes an hour to fall asleep. Yeah, anyway, I'm wearing West Ham because as you will see West Ham finally won and I'm very happy to finally wear this wonderful shirt. Let's get right to it. Premier League, it, I think it was the 21st match day that we're gonna watch and it started early with Brighton versus Chelsea. I hate those black Chelsea shirts. I I don't know. I think the yellow ones that I had last year were much better suited. I think, I mean, I know you can play in white against Brighton. Uh, although I think you could if you wanted. But uh, those black ones, black and orange, no, it's not Chelsea colors to me, on, on, honestly. Uh, it started with a goal by Aspilicueta in the 10th minute, which was the first goal of the new year in any of the top five leagues. Um, yeah, it was a tap in. But never, nevertheless, Chelsea had the bet of the first 30 minutes. But then Brighton slowly, slowly came coming in the second half. I, it seemed that many times it was only uh, when. Uh, not if Brighton will be scoring on those Chelsea had their chances where they maybe could have made it 2-0 but in the end it's the best goal of the afternoon and yeah it was an afternoon of really great goals all over the place but Johan Baksh with a bicycle kick really nice after a corner from uh, Dunk really nicely pulled put it in goal of the, af uh, of the day uh, maybe of the season so far, if you would like to this, this was really well, well taken. It ends 1-1. And you at this moment you think, oh, Chelsea might be losing some traction here. Turns out uh, they're actually the winners of that bunch, because this round was um, very much characterized by the bottom teams getting many points and that's the next match of Burnley against Aston Villa, the Claret Derby and I have the third team that has uh, those colors. Aston Villa, it's Aston Villa's fault from what I, I read over the last few uh, days cause, cause I was wondering why are so many teams in England having Claret and Blue, yeah, Aston Villa. Aston Villa played not in Claret and Blue, that was Burnley since they were at, were at home, they played in those horrible green, black, orangey jerseys, really don't, don't like them with some grid pattern on there. The other two kits for Aston Villa, great, this one, ugh, ugly. Um, what can I say, Aston Villa actually had a goal by Grealish uh, rule ruled out, they got in. Um, an, uh, early, an early leash lead uh, through uh, Wesley in the 27th. Grealish makes it with a nice shot in the 41st, 2-0 uh, at the half. And you think Villa is cruising to victory. And yeah, they kind of tried to defend thereafter. Burnley came up, but uh, only could find um, the consolation goal through a thunderous header by Wood uh, in the 80th. In the Equalizer would not come and it ends 2-1 for Villa. Big win for them. Then in the second slot we had Newcastle playing against Leicester. A game that was relatively even for the first, I want to say, 30 minutes or so until Newcastle shot themselves in the foot. Uh, a cross pass uh, on the penalty box is intercepted by Jose Perez. I mean, it wasn't even fast play. This was one of those really stupid passes and he can run in, in, in into the box, make a dummy and put it into the net in the 36. And three minutes later... It's almost same thing. Same side of the of the defense. The ball is played forward. It's intercepted by Jose Perez. It goes to Madison with a very nice shot into the corner. It's 2-0. And basically, Leicester didn't have to do much to get this two-goal lead because it was, I don't want to say own goals, but it was very much helped by uh, Newcastle's inept defending. 
Uh, and that was the game late on Chaudhuri with another really nice shot. They were long range shot, made it 3 0, and that's a big win for Leicester. And you have the feeling that Leicester, if they're not the second best team, they're at least the third best team in England at the moment, and a top four spot for them looks quite the possibility. Uh, then we had Southampton beat Spurs 1 0, where um, the goal came uh, through Inks wonderfully done. I mean, he uh, tipped it more or less uh, past, I think it was all all the world. I'm always getting those Belgian defenders mixed up and then slots it home. I mean, really nicely done. And this was already in the 17th minute. Uh, and I have to say Spurs who played in there uh, again in the dark churches, there was not much coming from Spurs. Uh, from what I see, even the highlights, I mean, there were not a great uh, chances to equalize. I think Southampton really far, far, far the groove. I think the most notable thing is when um, Mourinho was spying at the opposing bench to on the uh, assistant coach and Dooley got a yellow card for that. That was a weird scene. And then uh, the press conference after, better not talk about it. Um, Watford played against Wolves in a game that last season Wolves would have been a pretty good one. Uh, I think it was an FA Cup semi-final uh, as well. Um, I thought Wolves were at first a little bit better, but Watford gets a goal, Deolo Feo, with a really, really nice shot. And I have to say, he is in great form, uh, to be honest. Uh, makes it 1-0 in the 30th. Um, right after I have Ducouré with another shot that got a deflection. This, you know, very, very often if you see great goals these days, there's usually some sort of deflection happening there. Uh, and upon replay, a great goal doesn't look that great anymore. That was one of those. But 2 0 for Watford, a uh, seemingly vital win because I was expecting Wolves to actually rule that one. Pedro Neto puts one back in the 60th, and I thought, oh, the equalizer will be coming, especially since the 70, 71st. Um, uh, who was it? Cabazella was sent off uh, for preventing a clear goal scoring chance. It was not coming, and the game ends 2 1 for Watford. I actually thought that Watford in the end was even a little bit closer. To making it three, then uh, Wolves making it two. Remarkable result, it has to be said. Uh, City against Everton was most notable because the world-class coaches were meeting each other and when you see them interacting, they really, both Guardiola and Angel, they have a ton of respect for each other. Uh, I would say some of the best, if not the best coaches um, of the early uh, 2010s and late uh, 2000s meeting right there. Um, the game was most of the time all city, although Everton in very interesting looking, I have to say, not bad looking jerseys. I wish that the crest was not uh, all monochroma, uh, monochromatic here, but yeah, you know, black, the blue on black. I, I think if you make white on black or even use the regular rag jerseys, it would also look nice. So it's a little bit ghosted on that one, but other than that, the jersey looks nice, I have to say. Um, Everton, it's clear that you have a coach that is, will put some structure and some order in there. I don't want to say it's a trademark Angelotti because Angelotti's teams, in my opinion, are not known for uh, defending, but at least there's a clear defensive structure there so they could hold City at bay and it took a long time until City found the breakthrough, which then came through Gabriel Jesus with a very nice uh, lead taking shot in the 51st to make it 1-0 and then seven minutes later he takes a shot in the near corner to make it 2-0. You think the game is done and does it? No. Moise Ken uh, intercepts a pass and this is the one thing with City. <sighs> Why cannot they defend like at all? That's the one thing I... Is, even if you have uh, players out, it doesn't make much sense to me that uh, they're so bad in defense. Intercepted the ball, eventually gets to Richard Leeson, who puts it home uh, and makes it 2-1. Still, City hangs on for, for the win. Norwich against Crystal Palace. Uh, Norwich gets a very early goal where the ball falls uh, very nicely to Cantwell, who can pull it in from a short distance. Everyone thought it's offside. It was not offside. And then Norwich misses chance after chance after chance after chance. Not that Crystal Palace was bad in, in the game, but the chances that Norwich had... Uh, they should have made it 2-0 and how often it is you don't make the goal you give up the goal uh, we came after Zaha assist uh, makes it 1-1 in the 85th and everyone in uh, Norwich was hop hoping that 
yeah, it's an offside. No, it was not. There was the foot there. Kind of sucks a little bit because uh, those were points that you needed in Norwich. I really have to, have to say they should make a lot more goals than, than they do. I, th I think, again, uh, they dropped points. They should have won against Spurs. They should have won this, this one and then you would look a whole lot better. But yeah, at least they are picking up points. Again, a bottom team that picks up points. West, uh, West Ham picked up points big time. 4-0 against Bournemouth. And it was a deflected shot by Noble that gave them to 1-0. Uh, the 2-0 by Allaire in the 25th was the second best goal of the evening with a scissor kick. Really nicely pulled, putting it in. And I was also, also amazed. I mean, he takes a shot and he's quickly up again. That was uh, athletic feat. Really great goal. Uh, love to see that one. Then uh, uh, West Ham gets a penalty in the third, the third, third, fifth, and three nil. I didn't expect them to get such an easy win, but uh, David Moyes is back, and suddenly something is working again. Don't judge it yet. Uh, wait for a few games because we saw you need to give a coach at least ten, if not fifteen or half a season to really make. Um, an assessment of how good good he is. Just look at Ole Gunnar Solskjaer last season, where at first you think he's a genius, and then he gets the country and all falls apart. But again, I'm very happy for West Ham to get back on winning uh, uh, ways. In the 66, Felipe Anderson makes another goal, and West Ham uh, profits big time in the table from that one. And then the late game that I said already, I didn't see the first half. Arsenal against Manchester United. Arsenal really looked good from what I could tell from all of what I saw in the highlights. They had many, many, many chances. Very early on. Yes, it was a little bit deflected, but at least uh, you get it. Um, Pepe scores 1-0 for Arsenal uh, or in the eighth minute. And thereafter, there was really not much coming from Manchester United. You really needed a little bit more... Uh, I, I, will, I, will, I was expecting more because United had really a great uh, post-Christmas break with two wins that were very convincing. No, they didn't show up at Ar Arsenal at all. And it's even Socrates, the wobbly defender, together with that, that David Luiz. I mean, that defense played great yesterday. I still wouldn't trust them, to be honest. But Socrates makes it 2-0 and Arsenal... Hangs on, is very defensively sound in the second half. United had maybe two chances, I think one by Fred, and then another one late where Leno is uh, getting the ball very nicely through. Uh, they were. Mu it was much closer that Arsenal makes the third one, uh, especially two Özil passes that were one wonderful. I mean, maybe Özil finally shows up. Maybe it is a good, good idea to have your one of your most talented players be part of the team and move forward. But, you know, I know Özil is a very maddening player because he has a lot of um, gifts. He just doesn't have pace and that might be not good for the Premier League. So, yeah, that leaves us with the Thursday night game between Liverpool and Sheffield United. Which we Well, not much to say about the Liverpool game except that it was a relatively easy win against Sheffield United thanks to a very early goal already of Salah where, yeah, the defender... Slipped Robertson, got the edge, could put the ball in, and Saleh, Salah just slammed it home really nicely between the goalkeeper's legs. Even then, Liverpool had a few chances. I think there was one notable by Wijnaldum. I think Salah had another one. But you know, I kind of felt it was not the greatest game of Liverpool in the first half. But if they would have won it, they could have scored more goals. Uh, second half, more of the same, except that Liverpool uh, really pressed forward a little bit more. Sheffield United didn't really have chances and in the 64th after a wonderful pass by Salah, um, Mane makes it a second but you know it was more or less on the rebound because uh, then the goalkeeper saves it and he slots it in. At that moment I thought Liverpool and that's the Liverpool I love. I love to see. I really enjoy watching Liverpool wearing my Liverpool shirt that I got about a year, year, year ago and I'm getting a lot of mileage out of it, I have to say. Um, yeah, I have to say that uh, I really thought I could be third and the fourth quickly added on there, but, you know, I was always a little bit... Something was missing then as well, always the last pass. And then in the end, um, even Sheffield United could have had a chance, but I'll listen saved one uh, quite well, but I think it was overall a very secure 2-0 win. Liverpool is, you know, tomorrow 
on the third would be a year that they lost in the league the last time against Man City in this wonderful, wonderful game that we talk a lot about. Um, but yeah, they remain a calendar year unbeaten for sure. Let's see if they can make a season unbeaten. It's a pretty big achievement. If you look now at the table, uh, Liverpool, <laughs> it's 13 points with a game in hand. It's all about decided. Uh, Leicester City, Man City uh, are neck to neck in a way. Uh, Chelsea also crept. They made the point, and everyone behind did not win. So Chelsea actually increased the advantage over United, Spurs, and Wolves. Uh, Sheffield United also didn't did not win. So and Crystal Palace also. So everyone behind Chelsea up until Arsenal did not win. Arsenal um, overtakes Everton, Southampton uh, squeezes past Newcastle and then yeah we have Burnley's lo lo losing spot but West Ham and Aston Villa get out of the relegation zone uh, Aston Villa gets out of the relegation zone uh, West Ham also moves one up and Bournemouth comes uh, one down and it's now Bournemouth, Watford and Norwich uh, with Watford only two points away from the relegation uh, not the relegation but um, from safe shore so um, it might be a nice relegation battle coming in England because I think even Norwich could pick up a few uh, more points it is definitely in them and I think then I would say I mean everything I would even say Newcastle down uh, Southampton and Everton have been in this decent form of late, but I think everything on Newcastle down, there's a chance that they might not uh, make it or that they get relegated. Well, that concludes now the round 21. We have 10 day Premier League break or something like that, um, but there's no break of English action. I will take a break. I'm really, really looking forward now to. Premier Division and especially Serie A, but I'm be happy to welcome the Premier League back because it's quite exciting uh, to see as well. Anyway, let me know what you thought about the games happening New uh, New Year's Day and thereafter. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.